Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, great to see you all here, and thank you to all those speakers because they did half of the job for me, really, with the presentations. I think, from particularly what uh, Lord Pryor said, he can get a grasp that I think we all know and we have felt that technology has a great impact on industry and our economies, but obviously on people as well. So, I want to talk a little bit today about why are we doing this and I'm not going to overwork the point. The point is yes this is all about productivity as we said um, earlier and it's all about generating new businesses and more wealth for the country but ultimately when we go home it's about the certainty that we're going to have a job in a few years and that our children are going to have a job as well, that we can have a fulfilling career, a rewarding career, adding value. So it's all about prosperity as well at the end of the day when we think about society. And I think we've heard, I mean, this has been mentioned before, we've all seen the scary headlines about the risks that technology brings. But I think what's important is the word risk. And we are the ones who stand between risk and reality. It's up to us to define and to craft and to manufacture our own future and the future of workforce. So I think today uh, I, I really welcome the topic of the panel because it's all about discussing and taking up that debate about how do we make the most of talent. Now we've had, um, Jürgen, thank you very much for introducing us to Made, Smarty, uh, Made Smarter. And it's really good to see that a big part of that is about skills. So we've had already some strong recommendations about it, but we need to keep up the debate. We need to keep talking about this, understanding it, and being proactive about it. The more we prepare for it, the better we're going to be able to make the transition. So today, I'd like to set a, a few challenges that I think are important in this topic. The first one is that there's going to be winners and losers in this transition. And the challenge is how do we transform those losers into winners? How do we make the transition easier? The review says that we're at risk of losing or displacing about 295,000 jobs. But we're going to create at least 470,000 new jobs. So how do we reskill people quick enough to go through the transition success successfully? The other thing is we're obviously making a recommendation now to upskill about a million people. And that's great news, but it's also very ambitious. What are the mechanisms that we're going to use to make that possible? The next point is more about the evolution of work. We've all seen it in previous revolutions. How is this going to change the way we work? Are we all going to be self-employed, for example, in the future? And how does that um, dictate the way the business model between government, industry and society works? How do wages evolve, welfare, pensions, taxes? And the last one is again about proactivity. We talk a lot about workers as if they're the victims out there and we have nothing to do with them, but really they're the driving force behind this. How do we empower them not to be victims, but to become part of the solution and to be the masters of their own career development, lifelong career development? So those are the challenges I'd like to set to the panel. Um, and just to finish um, with a thought, uh, with everything is, is about whether you see the glass half full or half empty. I'm definitely a glass half full kind of person and I think it's the same with this revolution. I think we need to see it as an opportunity because there's an enormous amount of potential in people and talent. Let's see and work out what are the mechanisms for us to make the most of that talent. Thank you.